Hello, good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at what's going on in our city, in our state, in our country by reading headlines. We take a look at what you guys are up to uh, through your questions, your comments, your ideas, your suggestions, and we take all this information, put it together, and hopefully put it to good use as we try to connect with each other and with our destination Puerto Vallarta as a community of English speaking locals. Today is September 17th. Mexican independence celebrations are over. So we're going to do our last reporting of what went on so that we can move forward to all kinds of new and exciting things. Um, it is a pleasure to see you. It is a pleasure to read all these good mornings that are starting to trickle in. Thank you very much. And of course, today, as always, we welcome friends that are joining us live for the first time. If that is your case, you can let us know by writing the word new in your comment, and we'll be so very happy to give you a nice little welcome. If there's something truly important that you wish to share with us, it always helps if you add a capital letter Q to your comments so that we can take a look at your comments um, during the comment section. <laughs> okay, so today we cover the last of the reporting that we have for Mexican independence. We also take a quick look at the weather. We look at a couple of an additional Mexican flag glitches. Um, I tell you about a new restaurant that I discovered yesterday. And, um, and we're going to talk about the Mexican Rebozo, what it is and where it came from, why it is a staple in Mexican garments and why some women are reluctant to wear them and some men as well. But not me. Why not? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Let's take a quick look. Okay, so if you were out and about El Centro yesterday afternoon, of course, you may have caught a glimpse of the military parade that went through the heart of the city. As we've been mentioning, military parades are traditional through the country um, on September 16 as part of the Mexican independence celebration. Of course, these celebrations were canceled for the past couple of years due to the pandemic. However, we know that hundreds of locals and tourists gathered in our city as the parade went by. And of course, this year, the parade featured not only members of the Army and the Marines, but also members of the newly created... Oh my God, you cannot even see the photo. My bad. Da, 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 da. There you go. <laughs> my bad. Um, and of course, you know, this year, as I was saying, the parade also included members of the newly created National Guard. And this pretty much wraps up the activities related to Mexican independence celebrations. The next major Mexican holiday, of course, is November 20th, when we celebrate the Mexican Revolution of 1910. 
But we cannot leave quite yet without at least uh, taking a look at a couple of other Mexican flag snafus that happened around the country. Maybe it's because of the pandemic and some of us are out of practice, but we keep hearing about these. This one in particular took place in Mexico City where um, President Lopez Obrador's supporters creatively put together a Mexican flag that mashes together um, or meshes, I don't know, puts together in a weird mix the official colors of the Mexican flag plus the official color of the Morena Party, which is our president's political party. And of course, our president himself perched right in the middle of the emblem. Nice. At least this particular flag was created by supporters and not part of an official event. But this one, on the other hand, was part of a series of flags that were installed in an official building in Tepic, Ay, Nayarit, where they failed to include the national emblem, so it looks more like an Italian flag. Of course, social media pundits didn't waste any time to send their critical comments to Tepic mayorist Geraldine Ponce, who apparently was not pleased, giving city workers no option than to attach decals to the flags. Let's throw one of these. Yes. And of course, we hope it doesn't rain in Tepic because that would that would totally dissolve the decals. And apparently Alejandro Galvan, who serves as chief of staff for the city, initially responding, responded claiming that the emblem had been eliminated with Photoshop only to step out of his offices to realize that he was wrong. And and thank you for the OPUES, Mark Jennings here. I'm going to give you an opportunity for another one elsewhere in Nayarit. They try to fix a similar glitch by using a decal as well, but the resulting scale of things turned out to be quite, quite puny. Um, uh, it's creative, but it's against the law. What can I tell you? But as I said before, this wraps up our very respectful and very snarky and very amusing reporting of Mexican Day celebrations. Uh, at least until next year or until 20 de noviembre, November 20th, where we will find out if anybody else gets created with our national emblems. Now, before we head over to the weather, um, let, well, let's talk about the weather. Tropical Storm Lester is the latest weather phenomenon to hit the Mexican Pacific. It is expected to touch land today along the state of Guerrero. This is south of us, of course, but it will bring considerable amounts of rain to our state as it moves inland in the next few days. Um, not so differently that one happened last year with Hurricane Nora. It went inland south of us and it made it rain in the mountains and all that rain came to our rivers. Let us hope it does not get nearly as ugly as it got last year. And let us take a quick look at our local weather forecast just to see what we can expect through the weekend. This is one of the sunniest fucking days we've ever seen from the standpoint of sun rays, says Snarky Weatherman. It's 26 degrees right now. Our humidity is at 88 percent and our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 79. Our weather forecast for today uh, says rain and humidity for today with a high of 30 and a low of 25. Tomorrow, Sunday, more rain and humidity with a high of 31 and a low of 21, 25 again. And then on Monday, more rain and humidity with a high of 30 and a low of 25. So what are we going to get? Rain, humidity, and the usual weather we have been experiencing uh let's see what else do we have oh yes yesterday of course i had to walk to the atm to have some cash on me for the weekend and i found myself walking from my home to medina asensio avenue to my my atm which is located next to that girls uh nightclub and of course i was walking down um, lisboa street where um there's a couple of beautiful, well, there's a beautiful restaurant. And of course, now I'm blanking the name. Uh, Almacen Versalles is the name. Uh, I forget. For, for I'm having a, a pothead 
moment, and I forget the name of Comedor Versalles. That's the name of the restaurant, Comedor Versalles, which I absolutely love. And Comedor Versalles is, of course, located right here. And as I'm walking by, I'm doing a double take because I see this fancy, schmancy looking new restaurant that is getting ready to be finished right next to it. And at first I thought it might be an extension of Comedor Versalles. I approached one of the workers and I asked, so what is going on? And they said, no, this is a separate restaurant. We don't know much about the restaurant just yet. I didn't ask any more questions because uh, the workers behind or in the back were giving me weird looks as in what are you doing taking photographs of this place? So anyhow, um, this is going to be a pretty place. Look at all the tiled work that they've done on the floor. And of course, um, it's going to be al fresco, or at least for the time being, until they figure out what they're going to do for their roof. So we will learn more about this as they open, or maybe you, some of you may already know um, what this restaurant is going to be, but it looks like it's going to be another pretty place to enjoy here in Colonia Versalles. As I mentioned yesterday, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, conducted by Gustavo Dudamel, will visit Mexico after making stops at Boston Symphony Hall and New York City's Carnegie Hall in Mexico. They will perform in uh, the Auditorio Nacional in Mexico City on October 28th, and then at the Teatro Juarez in Guanajuato the following day, making their debut in Mexico's acclaimed Cervantino Festival. This is the first tour they have had since the pandemic began. Can we make it all the way to Guanajuato? I don't think so, but it is a good thing to have such a, such a prestigious orchestra visiting Mexico. And of course, they have included uh, music by Mexican composers as part of the repertoire they will play here. And now, uh, before we get into the comments section, a little bit of culture about something that is very dear to my heart, or maybe it's dear to my heart because it's convenient. This article explores the evolution of the Mexican rebozo from a piece of clothing exclusively worn by indigenous women to a fashionable and sometimes expensive accessory. But what is a, re uh, but what is a rebozo to begin with? Well, they're around and you've probably seen them everywhere. You just maybe didn't know what they were called. A rebozo is a long, flat garment, very similar to a shawl, but longer in proportion. It is worn mostly by women in Mexico, but not anymore. It can be worn in various ways, usually folded or wrapped around the head or the upper body to shade from the sun or to provide warmth or even as an accessory to an outfit. It can also be used to carry things, and I'll show you that in a second. And for many years, this has been a traditional garment to wear by indigenous women. And it is, of course, largely or, or, or widely documented in colonial uh, writings uh, that women used to wear it during colonial times. We don't know the exact origin of it, but the traditional ones are hand woven. They're made from, co from cotton. My mouth is just sticky today. They're made from cotton. They're made from wool or silk or rayon, and they usually have a fringe. But again, um, it has for the longest time been associated with indigenous apparel. Little by little, though, this has changed. And let's take a look at some of its versatile uses. A rebozo, as you can see here, can be used to carry a child. And trust me, there are a ton of YouTube tutorials on how to do this. And it is quite possible that the late Mexican artist Frida Kahlo may have been one of the first women that turned rebosos into a fashionable statement. It is well documented that Frida Kahlo owned a bunch of them and she always wore one. And of course, guys can wear them too. And I'm wondering if you happen to own a reboso. I have a couple of them and usually carry one when I go on the bus or sometimes when I go to the beach, I carry one and it serves as a beach blanket. Uh, and when I crochet rectangular shawls, I'm pretty much always doing so with the rebozo in mind, making mine a little bit longer than a traditional shawl. 
So where do you buy a rebozo? Well, you can find them everywhere from the markets like at the Isla, at the, the, the municipal market at the Isla Rio Quale. You can buy them. They're very inexpensive. Um, or, you know, they can get very fancy and very detailed in their in their manufacturing or their, their making with very fine threads and they can become very expensive. But the beautiful thing about rebosos is that they can be either very affordable or very swanky. So there you have it. That's my quick adventure about the rebozo. And I wanted to share that with you so you can go and have one handy just in case you happen to need one. I think everybody should own a rebozo. And before we get into your comments, once again, I want to remind you that we're going to have this wonderful meet and greet this coming Thursday with all kinds of surprises and announcements. And I truly, truly hope you can join us at Whiskey Kitchen uh, Versailles this coming Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. And now let's jump into your, uh, boom, 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 your comments and see what everybody is up to. I see good mornings and that makes me smile and I love it. Uh, -pam 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 -pam. Lots of good mornings, lots of good mornings. Christy sending Super Saturday wishes to everyone. Well, I am going to gladly accept those Super Saturday wishes. I'm going to go up the river walking with logan we're going to explore a neighborhood that we're not familiar with and hopefully bring it to you on walking wednesday wednesday walking walking wednesday let's see what else we have do 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 ramona keeps counting days 30 more days uh let's see ryan watched the parade Man, there were a lot of weapons on display. Well, that's what military carry. That's why they're part of the military. I hope things are going well with your condo, Ryan. Let's see. Chaka, chaka, chaka. Da, 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 da. I see opues. <laughs> I love it when you use the expressions that you learn here. Opues for las banderas. I love it. Um... John adds an I way, which is another expression we haven't really explained, but we'll talk about I way one of these days. Um, <laughs> that is very funny. Must have been a sale on Italian flag somewhere. Well, you know, what actually ends up happening with these folks is they walk into Telas Parisina and they buy green, red, and white fabric and just piece it together. Of course, we don't know if that green or that red are actually the same hues as the official Mexican flag, but what do I know? Um, let's see. Uh, 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 Not really a question, more of an FYI. Comedor Versailles is my absolute favorite place for friend meetups. It is fabulous with great food and a beautiful atmosphere. Only problem is trying to order from Uber Eats or Rappi. They are there, but people complain that they aren't because they're under Comedor Stella. That was the original name, and the two companies won't allow them to change it. So if you're looking to for them to deliver, search Comedor Stella. That is unfortunate. I had no idea that this was the case, Charlotte, but I will agree with you, Comedor Versailles. And I'm sorry I blanked the name earlier. My brain, it works that way. Comedor Versailles is a great place to gather. Maybe we should have a meet and greet there at some point. Um, and you're probably wondering why we keep having the meet and greets at Whiskey Kitchen. We don't have to. We can have a meet and greet wherever you want or wherever you suggest. It so happens that this coming meet and greet takes place at Whiskey Kitchen uh, again for a very specific reason that will become apparent once we meet. It's part of the surprise. But yeah, I love Comedor Versalles. I hope they can figure out a way to uh, fix that, Charlotte. And thank you very much for the tip. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Angeli has a, Angel, bleh, bleh, bleh. Angelica has a few rebosos. Good for you. So does Karen. I love it. Uh, Kathy tried a rebozo once. French got caught in the wheelchair. Well, I'm sure that rebosos can be found without fringes. Of course, there might be those that say, well, that's not a traditional rebozo. But then again, 
I crochet mine, and that's it's not a traditional rebozo either. Uh, I see another queue. Yes, Mark and your wife Linda, you guys are going for e you're going to Egypt. You won't be on the meet and greet, but um, we will be thinking of you. And I hope you have a fantastic trip, Egypt. That is really far away. How wonderful! Fly safely and come come back home safely. That's for sure. And this, my friends, brings us to the end of Coffee and Headlines for today, the end of our Mexican Independence Weekend coverage. Next week, I'm sorry, I'm itchy. Next week, we continue with news and headlines as we discover them. We will continue, of course, with musical. I may, we may get to a musical Monday in time, if and if we do, we'll announce... Um, the song or the music that we feature ahead of time, as you have requested. Um, and this is another great suggestion. Before we go, a beautiful rebozo can also be uh, used as wall art. Absolutely. And I think that is a great idea and a great suggestion. Anyhow, this is what we have. I hope to see you again soon. I hope to see you again on Monday. I definitely hope to see you again uh on Thursday at our get together. But most importantly, I hope you have a really phenomenal weekend. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay in touch.